Last year, I, I had a chance to look at the videotape of my comments. I showed them to our boys. My wife, Tracy's here. And uh, our, our eldest son, Aiden, asked, why are you crying? <laughs> he said, did the riders win? <laughs> So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders did not win, but it did start a great conversation as a family and with our children. We invested in Freedom Road, community that uh, provides our drinking water. And through the city's commitment to design and construct bridges, all weather road access uh, to this isolated community uh, will become finally, finally a reality. <coughs> We supported the call for an inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Thanks to our federal partners, that's going to happen now. And we hosted the One Summit last fall, as has been mentioned earlier, bringing together people who've been working hard on the front lines to reduce racism here and across the, the, the country, in fact, around the world, for many years. Uh, the One Summit also allowed us, like we're doing here today, to share opinions, ex exchange ideas, and really to elevate the discussion on a national level. You know, as I reflect on the events of the last year, I believe we've responded to the McLean's article on January 22nd with honesty and with humility. We knew we could not and cannot mend the profound wrongs and injustices of generations and centuries in one year with a single summit or in a press conference. But I remain committed to the journey. You know, today as I look around this room and I listen to those who have spoken before me, and I look around at where we are today, I'm proud to see just how important this endeavor is to so many people. And it's really been heartwarming to see the number of people and organizations, both private sector, public sector, who are working every single day, who dig deep to better embrace diversity, empathy, and dignity. It's individuals like Sal Infantino, who translated Welcome to Winnipeg in Arabic on his cafe sign to make Syrian refugees feel more at home. It is the Sun Osborne Syrian Refugee Initiative, fundraising over $60,000 to assist refugees and newcomers to our city. It's the donation of furniture from uh, the former Class Louis Riel and the diverse group of volunteers, from off-duty police officers to Hutterites to the newly arrived Syrian refugees themselves helping to move and distribute furniture. It is the downtown biz hearing the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to actions and embarking on plans to help educate Winnipeggers and downtown businesses to understand that we are all, in fact, treaty people. It's the frontline organizations like Welcome Place and the Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization of Manitoba, working hard every single day to help people settle into our community and into a new home. It's Meet Me at the Bell Tower, a community movement in our North End, which continues to bring young people together to find ways to effectively end violence. It's students at St. John's High School and across the Winnipeg Division, teaching each other empathy and how to better understand and truly listen to each other. Our children are teaching each other empathy. How cool is that? And later this year in May, as was just mentioned, uh, I look forward to participating in the Winnipeg School Division's uh, diversity walk. I would encourage others to join as well. It is Manitoba's post-secondary education institutions and public school boards working together to develop the Indigenous Education Blueprint, making Indigenous education a priority. It is Economic Development Winnipeg working to identify, to capitalize on Indigenous economic development opportunities here in Winnipeg. It is Tourism Winnipeg recently launching a microsite, micro website de devoted to Winnipeg's LGBTQ community to help encourage universal tolerance. It is all of these things. It's all of us. Over the last year, some are going to say that nothing has changed. I do believe, however, that we've been able to reignite the public conversation 
and really elevate the dialogue on racism and inclusion. And I believe that we have, in fact, shifted the tone. I also believe that we've been able to drive this conversation down to the individual level where it really needs to occur. Now we're on a journey as individuals, as a city, and a nation. And as such, I'm very pleased to announce that I'm declaring the year 2016 as the year of reconciliation for Winnipeg. I hope to, uh, that we will build on the years of incredibly important work by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and all of our grassroots organizations. It's my hope that it will enable us to continue the dialogue, maintain our focus as a community to be more inclusive and more understanding. As part of the, the coming year, I'm also committed to developing an urban Aboriginal accord for Winnipeg. Now this accord will be a living, Emo uh, emotional. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's an emotional topic. This accord will be a living, evolving document aimed at strengthening relationships with our Aboriginal communities by articulating our ongoing responsibilities together with annual reporting of goals and successes. I am committed, committed to working with Council to support the implementation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action that are directed at municipalities. This will uh, start by enhancing the City of Winnipeg's existing diversity training for employees, making it mandatory for all <laughs> As well as including more history on Aboriginal peoples, and the horrendous legacy of residential schools. I can't even talk about residential schools without getting emotional. And I hope you can either, because the more you learn about it, uh, it's sickening. We'll work with residential school survivors, uh, the Truth and Truth Reconciliation Commission itself, and the existing owners to establish historical signage at the former Assiniboine is it an Indian residential school on Academy Road? <laughs> Winnipeg Library Services will seek to partner with the National Truth Center for Truth and Reconciliation to become more actively involved in public engagement, education, and reconciliation activities as well. I will also support the extension of the Winnipeg Private Refugee Sponsorship Assurance Program. This, this uh, unique program offers a financial assurance to groups that provide private sponsorship of refugees in the event that sponsorship breaks down. I will explore opportunities through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to identify ways to allow mayors of our big cities to share and to learn what we are doing in our own respective jurisdictions across this great country of Canada to promote racial inclusion and to address the challenges of racism in all of our cities. I'm, uh, I'm also committing to visit every high school in Winnipeg over the next two years to emphasize the importance of civic engagement, reconciliation, and diversity. I will also continue to welcome and support refugees and to foster strong relationships with our provincial and our federal partners to further enrich Winnipeg's beautiful, diverse cultural fabric. Winnipeg's a growing, thriving, and diverse city. You see that here today. Now, more than ever, is a time for us to better embrace our values of openness, of compassion, and to realize that acceptance of new peoples and cultures it's what makes us strong.